Digital marketing is a huge and exciting field with tons of different roles available. But which role is the right one for you? In this video, I'm gonna help you find out. Hi, my name's Ed, Chief Marketing Officer here at Career Foundry. And over the last 12 years, I've held lots of different roles within digital marketing. First of all, as an individual contributor, as an SEM manager, through to a content marketing manager, and also growing digital marketing teams of up to 40 people. And one of the questions that I get asked the most is what's the best digital marketing job? So if you have a background in digital marketing or perhaps you've done the Career Foundry digital marketing program, what role should I go into? And to be honest, it's kind of a difficult question to answer because the field of digital marketing is so varied. It really depends on what your interests and passions are as to which role makes sense for you. So to illustrate all the different roles available to you as a digital marketer, I'm gonna do a breakdown of the marketing team here at Career Foundry to give you an idea of what a modern marketing organization looks like and exactly how you could fit into that organization. So what I'm gonna do is sketch out the marketing organization down on this notepad, and I'm gonna make a simple split to start with technical marketing and non-technical marketing. Now, I think this split is important for understanding, but at the same time, it's important to know that there are plenty of blurred lines between these uh, splits and some of the non-technical teams definitely have technical expertise and vice versa. So let's make a start with the technical teams. I'll put technical down here and non-technical over here on the right hand side. And the first team that I'll start with for the technical marketing is the performance team. Now within the performance team at Career Foundry, for example, we have quite a few different roles. We have paid digital or performance marketing managers, SEO managers, CRO managers, and also a data analyst. And what unites all of these people? Basically a similar approach to the way that they're doing marketing. It's extremely metric driven. It's extremely experimentation driven where they're trying to work in controlled environments to iteratively improve what they're doing. So if we look, first of all, at the performance marketing managers, you can also call them PPC managers as well, or pay-per-click managers. And they're basically managing all the ads that you see distributed through social networks like Facebook and TikTok, and also through Google with paid search ads. And they're typically the ones with the biggest budgets for marketing. So it could be tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or millions every month. Next up, we have the SEO manager, who's responsible for optimizing the website so that it's found through search engines like Google. This optimization could be technical, like improving page speed, or it could be content driven, like doing keyword research to find popular topics that are searched for on the search engines. Next up, we have the CRO manager. That stands for conversion rate optimization. And that's basically improving conversion rates from site visit to the generation of a lead or a sales call, for example. And this will typically involve lots of testing, whether it's A-B testing, sequential testing, or multivariate testing. And finally, within the performance team, we have the data analyst or a marketing analyst. And essentially this person is responsible for doing all the legwork around report building, around all the reports that are used on a daily basis. Moving across from the performance team, the next team that we have under the technical side is the operations team. And sometimes this could also be called a CRM team as well. And typically within the operations team, you have both marketing operations managers or marketing ops and sales operations managers or sales ops. Now marketing ops is primarily focused on email marketing and nurturing leads from the point of first contact when they put an email address into a form on a website all the way through to either booking a meeting with sales or otherwise purchasing a particular product. On the other hand, sales operations will be helping the sales team with automation and also the rest of the organization with tooling and automation to improve the efficiency of their work. Finally, both these teams need to be quite technical because they really need to understand how the CRM, something like HubSpot or Salesforce works. So then we have performance and we have operations. The final technical team that I would mark down here is marketing tech. So marketing tech is where the product, the engineering and the marketing teams meet. And it's typically a cross-functional team of developers, designers and a product manager. And to be honest, the product manager is often someone with a marketing background who's then gone through career development or a small career change to take on the product management role and is really involved in determining the strategy and execution for that marketing tech team. So to summarize, we have the performance team with the PPC managers or performance marketing managers, SEO, CRO, and data analysts. Then we have the operations team 
with marketing operations and sales operations, managing the CRM. And then we have marketing tech, which is essentially responsible for the marketing infrastructure. So there we have the technical side of the marketing covered. Now let's move over to the non-technical side. So the non-technical side is probably the thing that you think of first when you think of digital marketing or marketing in general. It's all about copywriting and content production and to some extent content distribution as well. So first within the non-technical side of marketing, we have the editorial team, could also be called the content marketing team. And this team typically consists of writers or editors or content marketing managers. They're in charge of some kind of publication, typically a blog on a website, and they're essentially writing super valuable content for a very specific target group or target market for your product. Then moving on to the social team. Social, obviously you'll think of social media marketing. So posting to different social media platforms like Instagram or TikTok or Facebook. Nowadays, I think social has gone a little bit further. And in the social team at Career Foundry, for example, we also have content producers that really focus on video production. So under here, I'll make note of the social media managers and also the video producers or videographers. And finally, within the social team, we have the events managers. And the events managers are really managing the synchronous content where the video producers and social media managers are more focused on asynchronous content. And the synchronous content means live experiences where people can build up a proper personal and personalized connection to the brand. So moving on from the editorial and the social team, we have next the creative team. We often talk about the creative team as a kind of in-house agency. So they're the team that's really tasked with building out the advertising materials that we use on, for example, the performance marketing channels, but also the array of different marketing materials, whether it's brochures, leaflets, all those kinds of things are being generated within the creative team. And who do you need to do that? Well, you first of all need a copywriter. And this copywriter is probably specialized in short form copy. So slogans and ad copy, that kind of thing. And next up, we have the designers. And these might be typically marketing designers or designers with a graphic design background that have then gone through their own digital transformation. And then finally, you have uh, another video producer or videographer. And that video producer is also focused on generating ad creatives. So perhaps short form video in order to be distributed on Facebook or TikTok, for example, as advertising material for the company. And then moving over to the final team that we have on this non-technical side, we have the brand team. And the brand team can consist of a brand strategist and a brand manager and a product marketer. So how are these roles different from one another? So the brand strategist is working very high level, potentially with senior leadership and the C-level to figure out the narrative and the story of the brand and how to communicate this best. And then we have the brand manager and they might potentially be involved much more in the project management of the communication of these different aspects of the brand. So they're working typically with the creative or performance teams in order to project manage the release of these campaigns on a timely basis. And all of these roles will be heavily involved as well in brand research. And the final position that we could put under this umbrella of non-technical marketing is PR. And PR sometimes sits within the brand function, but can also sit much closer to the C-level and senior leadership. PR is all about seeding stories and opinion pieces in popular publications in order to build trust for the brand. So in summary, on the non-technical side, we have the editorial team, with the writers building up organic traffic to the website. Then we have the social team operating across the social media networks and platforms to build awareness for the product. Then we have the creative team, again, the in-house agency, which is really the engine room for creativity and for the generation of campaigns and marketing collateral. Then we have the brand team, which is operating to tell the company's narrative to ensure consistency across all the assets that are produced and to do the research which drives these campaigns. And then we have the PR function as well, as I said, could be in the brand team or outside the marketing organization, which is building up awareness through coverage in the press. And just to reiterate, because I think it's super important, even though we've made this split between technical and non-technical, accomplished marketers are gonna have a good mix of both skills. So if you take the marketing ops manager, or the email marketer, for example, this person might be quite an accomplished copywriter authoring their own emails, but also managing the technical side of segmentation, uh, sending, and also managing the CRM. 
And for me, this is the most exciting thing about the field of digital marketing and why it's so dynamic. It perfectly merges the creative side with the analytical side. And to be an accomplished marketer, you have to have a really good understanding of both. And it has the added benefit that no day is the same. So if that spiked your interest in any of these roles within digital marketing, I really recommend that you check out the Career Foundry Digital Marketing Program. It's one of the most comprehensive marketing programs out on the market, and it will give you the level of knowledge necessary in order to succeed in any of these areas of marketing, whether it's on the technical side or the non-technical side. Not only that, but throughout the entire program, you'll be mentored by your own team of industry experts. And if you're interested in finding out more about the program and building a career in digital marketing, then check out the link in the description below. And if you have any questions about any of these roles, just drop a comment in the comment section or get in touch with the program advisor at Career Foundry. So that just about wraps it up for this video. If you wanna learn more about digital marketing and how to succeed in this field, I really recommend checking out this video just here. Otherwise, I hope you've got a really good understanding now of a modern day marketing organization and exactly how you could fit in and exactly the kind of direction that you wanna go into. So. With no further ado, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.